The Sass Mouth Web Slinging Superhero, probably one of the most iconic characters of modern American media and instantly recognizable around the world. With super strength, danger sense, and the ability to fling webs, and some seriously unresolved dead uncle issues, Spider Man slings across the streets of New York City fighting crime. But what if you were locked into a one on one deathmatch against the web slinging superhero? What chance would you have, and how could you overcome it? Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Infographic Show. Could you defeat it. Today, we're pitting the average Joe up against Spider-Man. Spider-Man was created by the legendary Stan Lee and Steve Ditko, first appearing in Amazing Fantasy No. 15 in August 1962. Stan Lee would go on to say that the inspiration for Spider-Man came from a desire to create a character with whom teenagers could identify, and cited the non-superhuman pulp magazine crime fighter The Spider as an influence. Although teenage superheroes at the time were given names that ended with boy, Lee wanted to change the character to age over time, and thought that the name Spider-Boy would have made the the character sound inferior versus other superheroes. As the character headed to print, Stan Lee was responsible for bringing the character concept and story to life, while Steve Ditko drew the costume, came up with the wrist web shooters and the spider symbol. Spider-Man was an instant success with his first appearance in Amazing Fantasy being one of Marvel's highest selling comics at the time. On March 1963, Spider-Man went prime time with his own solo comic dubbed The Amazing Spider-Man, eventually becoming Marvel's top selling series. But who exactly is Spider-Man and what would you be facing if you took him on? An ordinary high school student, Peter Benjamin Parker was a science whiz and orphan living with his Uncle Ben and Aunt May. One day he's bitten by a radioactive spider. This was before it was widely known that the only superpower radiation gives is cancer, and acquires agility and strength proportionate to a human-sized arachnid. But how strong exactly is that? Well, assuming Peter Parker got the best abilities from all spiders, he would be able to jump 50 times his own body length. Norwegian athlete Arna Treverwag's world record for the standing long jump stands at 12 feet and 2 inches, but with Spider-Man's powers he'd be able to jump 300 feet from a standing start. What about his climbing ability? Spider legs are covered in very tiny hairs, which are in turn covered with microscopic organs that seize onto tiny imperfections and surfaces, giving a spider incredible grip. However, very smooth surfaces defeat these organs, so as Spider-Man slings his way across town, he'd better make sure not to land on a plate glass window, or it'd be a long fall to the street below. Spider-Man famously has use of his spider sense, which alerts him to danger via a warning signal in his brain that triggers his pain and varies with the intensity of the threat. Spiders have a similar spidey sense, though theirs comes from their many eyes, which gives them an incredible field of view. To supplement their visual organs, spiders' bodies are also covered in tiny hairs, which are highly sensitive and perceive the smallest vibrations coming through the air or surface they're standing on. These hairs allow a spider to react to danger or prey lightning fast. Spider-Man's webs started off as wrist-mounted devices that fired off artificial webbing, but in later iterations they became biological adaptations that allowed him to do this without the help of a special gadget. As real-life spiders keep all the silk protein for web spinning in their enlarged posterior, we're not even going to hazard a guess as to where on his body Spider-Man stores his silk protein. A spider's web is incredibly strong though, with a tensile strength five times greater than steel, and yet is incredibly lightweight. A single strand that encircled the globe would weigh only 1 pound 2 ounces. So Spider-Man is approximately 50 times stronger than the average human, can detect impending danger near his location, stick to most surfaces, and shoot web 5 times stronger than steel. Should be an easy fight, right? Unlike most superheroes, Spider-Man has no obvious weaknesses, except dead uncle issues, meaning there is no Superman kryptonite-like weakness to directly exploit. However, also unlike most other superheroes, Spider-Man is not physically invulnerable to everyday weapons. He can take a hell of a beating, but he's not impervious to gunshots or stab wounds or a concussion from a club to the back of the head. His healing factor works on an order of days, not seconds or minutes. So even though he's super agile, super strong, and can shoot super strong webs, he's not completely invulnerable. First off, you're gonna want to be the one on the initiative versus Spider-Man. Make sure that you decide the battleground and not him. The most important thing to neutralize will be Spider-Man's maneuverability, so lure him to a location where he won't be able to physically stick to many walls. 
a big open field would work, though if you have access to Lex Luthor level wealth, then simply build a custom battlefield made of smooth glass. Magnetic boots and magnetic inserts beneath the glass would let you move around freely, while denying Spider-Man the ability to jump around and avoid your attacks. Secondly, we can't stress this enough. Forget hand-to-hand -hand combat. He's 50 times stronger than the average human. Spider-Man could rip your arms off and beat you to death with them. Longtime nemesis Dr. Octopus may have super strong titanium mechanical arms, but one serious punch from Spider-Man would obliterate his skull. Instead, it's apparently better to let Octopus run around endangering the entire city. Let's say in this deathmatch though, neither of you are holding back, so don't get into punching range. There's several good options for you at this point. You've lured Spider-Man to your custom killing field. Mary Jane seems to always make for good bait, so we recommend that. Next, you'll have to keep out of range, meaning you're going to have seconds to kill Spider-Man before you're toast. He may not be able to web-sling his way across a huge empty field or your custom-made glass bowl, but he can still jump 300 feet per bound. You're going to need something that can neutralize a fast-moving target with the ability to do acrobatic evasive maneuvers. You're going to need the US Navy's Phalanx Close-In Weapon System. Designed to defend Navy ships from anti-ship missiles, helicopters, drones, and other fast-moving targets, a Phalanx unit consists of a 20mm Vulcan cannon paired with a KU-band radar system for tracking targets. It also packs a forward-looking infrared sensor for detecting low-observable anti-ship missiles via their heat generation, and a fully automated targeting, tracking, and firing computer that leaves humans out of the loop and can react in milliseconds. Designed to destroy incoming sub and supersonic missiles, a Phalanx Sea Whiz is more than capable of tracking and shredding Spider-Man into spider paste with a firing rate of 3,000 rounds a minute or 50 every second. But in all honesty, that's overkill, as Spider-Man has proven repeatedly he's a good guy, and that might be his greatest vulnerability. Listen, this is a match to the death, so we're going to leave morality out of this one, but if you really want to defeat Spider-Man, just use human bait. Kidnap Mary Jane again, tie her up, and gag her in the middle of your chosen killing field. Again, somewhere nice, big, and open, and invite Spider-Man to come rescue her. Under Mary Jane's clothing, however, you will have secured and pre-armed an M60 Claymore mine, obviously facing outwards. We've talked about the Claymore before in the series, but probably because in all honesty, it's just the best at killing pretty much anything. Spider-Man will sense danger, but he's expecting a match to the death. Odds are not very high, he's going to be expecting you're so cold-blooded that you're going to suicide bomb his longest-running love interest just to eliminate him. But you are, because this is a match to the death. Listen, you may not win with the ability to claim the moral high ground here, but then again, you're facing a man-spider that can punch your face off. For the more morally scrupulous amongst you though, just stick with the phalanx. 